the one-eyed doe. A doe had the misfortune to lose one of her eyes and could not see anyone approaching her on that side. So to avoid any danger she always used to feed on the high cliff near the sea, with her sound eye looking towards the land. By this means she could see whenever the hunters approached her on land, and often she escaped. But the hunters found out that she was blind of one eye, and hiring a boat rowed under the cliff where she used to feed, and shoot her from the sea. Ah, cried she with her dying voice. You cannot escape your fate. Teaching of the story is. You cannot escape your fate. The Tree and the Reed Well, little one, said a tree to a reed that was growing at its foot. Why do you not plant your feet deeply in the ground? And raise your head boldly in the air, as do I? I am contented with my lot, said the reed. I may not be so grand, but I think I am safer. Safe, sneered the tree. Who shall pluck me up by the roots, or bow my head to the ground? But it soon had to repent of its boosting. For a hurricane arose, which tore it up from its roots, and cast it as a useless log on the ground. While the little reed, bending to the force of the wind, soon stood upright again. When the storm had passed over. Morale of the story is. Obscurity often brings safety. The Old Man and Death An old laborer, bent double with age and toil, was gathering sticks in the forest. At last he grew so tired and hopeless that he threw down the bundle of sticks and cried out. I cannot bear this life any longer. Ah, I wish death would only come to me and take me. Just after he spoke, death, a grisly skeleton, appeared and said to him, What would you like of me, mortal? I heard you call me. Please, sir, replied the woodcutter. Would you kindly help me to lift this bundle of sticks onto my shoulder? Teaching of the story is. We would often be sorry if our wishes were gratified. The Lion in Love A lion once fell in love with a young maiden and proposed marriage to her parents. The old people did not know what to say. They did not like to give their daughter to the lion. Yet they did not wish to enrage the king of the beasts. At last the father said, We feel highly honored by your majesty's proposal. But, you see our daughter is a young girl. And we fear that as the object of your affection you might possibly do her some injury. Mighty, I venture to suggest that your majesty should have your claws removed and your teeth extracted, then we would gladly consider your proposal again. The lion was so much in love that he had his claws trimmed and his big teeth taken out. But when he came again to the parents of the young girl, they simply laughed in his face, for he was no longer fearsome. Teaching of the story is, love can tame the wildest. The Bald Man and the Fly There once was a bald man sat down after work on a hot summer's day. A fly came up and kept buzzing about his bald head, stinging him from time to time. The man aimed a blow at his little enemy. But his palm came on his head instead. And again the fly tormented him. But this time the man was wiser, and said you will only injure yourself if you take notice of despicable enemies. Teaching of the story is. You will only injure yourself if you take notice of despicable enemies. The Shepherd's Boy There was once a young shepherd boy who tended his sheep at the foot of a mountain near a dark forest. It was rather lonely for him all day. 
So he thought upon a plan by which he could get a little company and some excitement. He rushed down towards the village calling out, Wolf, Wolf. The villagers came out to meet him, and some of them stopped with him for a considerable time. This pleased the boy so much that a few days later, he tried the same trick. And again the villagers came to his help. But shortly after this a wolf actually did come out of the forest and began to worry the sheep. And the boy of course cried out, Wolf, wolf, still louder than before. But this time the villagers, who had been fooled twice before, thought the boy was again deceiving them. So nobody stirred to come to his help. The wolf made a good meal off the boy's flock. And when the boy complained, the wise man of the village said, A liar will not be believed, even when he speaks the truth. Teaching of the story is, A liar will not be believed, even when he speaks the truth. The Fox and the Stork At one time the fox and the stork were on visiting terms and seemed very good friends. So the fox invited the stork to dinner and for a joke put put nothing before her but some soup in a very shallow dish. This the fox could easily lap up but the stork could only wet the end of her long bill in it and left the meal as hungry as she began. I am sorry, said the fox. The soup is not to your liking. Pray do not apologize, said the stork. I hope you will return this visit and come and dine with me soon. So a day was appointed when the fox should visit the stork. But when they were seated at the table, their dinner was contained in a very long-necked jar with a narrow mouth, in which the fox could not insert his snout. All he could manage to do was to lick the jar from outside. I will not apologize for the dinner, said the stork, because one bad turn deserves another. Teaching of the story is, one bad turn deserves another.